Cinematography is an important part of visual storytelling. Getting good shots is more than just pointing the camera at something. You need to understand principles of composition, shot size, angles, and movement. You should also look at where the light is and how it's hitting your subject. As you intentionally use these tools to make your shots look better, you'll be able to tell your story more effectively. Now, I'm gonna throw a lot at you right now, so make sure you pay attention. All right, so what the heck is composition? Composition, sometimes called framing, is basically where we position objects within the frame. There are some basic principles to follow with regards to how to compose an image, like the rule of thirds, headroom, nose room, and lead room. All of these help create images that are pleasing to look at because they're well, well composed. One of the most basic principles of composition is the rule of thirds. To put it simply, you divide your frames into thirds both horizontally and vertically, creating a tic-tac-toe board of sorts. See where the points intersect? Those are where we should place points of interest. But we don't always have to place objects on those points. Take the face, for example. If I'm filming a close-up of someone, I could put their eyes on the top line. If filming a wide shot of a landscape, you can put the horizon on the top or bottom third. It just kind of depends. Virtually every camera, including the ones we use in class and even your phone, will allow you to show the grid to help you better compose your shot using the rule of thirds. So use it. We'll talk more about composition in the future, but for now, just work on following the rule of thirds and your shots will improve almost immediately. Next is shot size, which refers to the distance the camera is from the subject being filmed, making them appear at different sizes. Placing the camera at varying distances helps tell your story more effectively. Sometimes it might be better to use wide shots, and other times it would be a better choice to use close-ups. It just really depends on the story you're telling and how you want to show it. As we go through each shot, pay attention to not only how to set it up, but how to use it to effectively communicate meaningful stories. A wide shot usually includes a dominating background, like shots of a landscape, a building, or other large area. If a character is visible at all, you can see their entire body. Sometimes wide shots are called establishing shots because they establish the location of a story. Moving quite a bit closer, you get a medium shot. When referring to a person, it generally shows them from the waist up. While the background is still there, it's less prominent and our attention usually focuses on the subject. Move the camera closer and you get the famous close-up shot. On a person, it usually shows just the head and sometimes a little bit of the shoulders, although it could be another part of the subject shown at a close range to see a specific action. There's very little background in a close-up, which means the audience is totally focused on the subject because they're filling up the frame. We typically use close-ups to show more emotion and action in the subject. Now, if we move the camera even closer, we get what's called an extreme close-up. This shot shows only a small portion of the subject, a specific action or more intense emotion. On a person, it might be the eyes, a twitch in the hand, tying shoes, or anything else from a super close distance. There is virtually no background in this shot size, which means there's nothing to distract the audience. Often these shots are followed by wider shots or medium shots. So why does shot size ultimately matter? Why not just use medium shots all the time? Well, as stated earlier, it's about your story. One thing to keep in mind, however, is the effect that getting closer to something has. Often, if you want to pay more attention to something, you get closer to it. Getting closer helps you focus on that thing more, which helps you understand it more. Placing the camera closer to your subject helps your audience pay more attention to it. There's not a lot of background to distract from the subject, so to put it simply, if you want to get your audience to pay attention, just get close. Another aspect of visual storytelling is camera angles. Camera angles focus on positioning the camera around your subject. You should still use the rule of thirds and appropriate shot sizes when considering different camera angles to use. We see life every single day at eye level. Cameras don't. Change the position and angle of your camera and our perspective is completely different. While it's not always necessary to change the angle of the camera, doing so can invigorate your audience and show them your subject from a different point of view. Eye level shots are set at the eye level of the subject you are filming making it feel like we're actually within the scene, observing the actor's face as if it were close to our own. This angle is typically considered neutral in that they don't designate the status or lack thereof of a character like maybe a high or low angle might. I'm guessing that a lot of your shots are gonna be eye level as it's pretty common. High angles are created by placing the camera just above the object or character and tilting the camera at a downward angle. 
High angles are often used to show the insignificance or vulnerability of the subject. It could also be used to show size and direction. To create a low angle, simply place the camera just below the character or object and tilt the camera slightly upward. These angles are often used to show power or importance as well as direction and size. A bird's eye view is often filmed from directly overhead or at extreme height and distance. Maybe you would use a drone to film these shots. These types of angles are used to show location, height, or direction. In this particular shot, the extreme angle combined with the wide shot makes the character seem small and all alone. And if you know the story in Moneyball, you know that's exactly how he feels. A bug's eye view is often used to show the height of something or a direction. It can also make reference to how small something is when used as a point of view shot. The camera is placed at as low a point as possible and can point almost straight up. Dutch angles are created by tilting the camera to the left or right. Often using a Dutch angle can suggest a feeling of uneasiness, disorientation, or a dreamlike state. It could also be used to suggest that something just isn't right. The first Thor movie used Dutch angles almost too much, but when you understand how it ties into the story, it actually makes a lot of sense. All right, guys, we've covered a ton of ground in a relatively short amount of time. So take some time to really think about the rule of thirds different shot sizes and the angles you see in the movies and TV shows you watch every day. And think about how you might apply them to the videos you're going to create in this class. So I think it's finally time to go and experiment with the concepts that we've just gone over. As always, if you have questions, just let me know.